For now, please welcome the editor at large of Grazia International Network, Fiona McIntosh. Hello, everybody. Um, that's a very hard act to follow, Martha. <laughs> very impressive. Um, as Duncan reminded me, I do have the graveyard shift. So, um, thanks, Duncan. Um, so I'll keep this this nice and tight and brief. And I thought I'd kick off with a little quiz for everybody. Who can tell me where this girl is from? Is she part of the new wave of Korean fashionistas or maybe she's a style editor from Shanghai? No, she's British born Susie Lau and she runs her hugely successful fashion blog Style Bubble from her home in London. Next up. Surely Scandinavian, rocking a post-punk look. Swedish, Finnish maybe. No, Kate Lamford was born in Virginia in the States, cut her fashion teeth in Sydney, Australia, and now works in New York as style director of USL. Lastly, we have this blonde bombshell who surely must be from the Upper East Side in Manhattan or maybe Kensington, London. Nope, she's Italian. Uh, her name is Chiara Ferrani. She was born in Cremona, Italy. She writes her trilingual fashion blog, The Blonde Salad, in Italian, English, and Portuguese. Has 110,000 views a day, and amazingly, 75% of her followers are from outside Italy. The point I'm trying to make here is the impact of globalization. It is now impossible to tell where someone is from just by the way she dresses or even the way she thinks. Over the last couple of years, we've seen an extraordinary merging of tastes, culture, aspirations, and attitudes fueled by the internet. It has not only opened up the world and broken down cultural barriers, it has spread the idea of global tastemakers. In my work at Grazia International, making, meeting the editorial teams who create content for some of the 22 editions around the world, I'm constantly amazed at how fundamentally similar their readers are. Sure, there are some cultural nuances, but not many. Largely, what excites and inspires an educated woman in metropolitan Munich, London, Milan, Paris is going to inspire and, and excite the same women in Johannesburg, Madrid, and Moscow. Case in point, Cara Delevingne. Walk into any arrivals hall in any airport in the world and her picture will be on advertising billboards. The English girl with a French surname who looks like a young Corrine Rotfeld and behaves like an American rap star. She's blazing a trail around the world because of her universal appeal. All of this may sound like the bleeding obvious, but I wonder, are all of us in magazine publishing doing enough to capitalize on this globalization of tastes and attitudes? Think of the amazing content we are producing between us. In a world full of background noise where every second 23-year-old has her own blog and you can find anything on the internet if you can be bothered to tap, tap it into the search engine. In this world, we are producing gold standard content. Readers and advertisers know and trust us as the best content creators in the business. They know that with all the myriad of media choices out there, magazines like Grazia will appeal to the urban, forward-thinking woman from Hamburg to Joburg. Case in point, when Mark Jacobs gave a rare pre-show interview last month, he spoke to Susanna Frankel, fashion director at Grazia UK, knowing his words would target exactly the audience he was after. It's easy to forget that no one does exclusives quite like us, and exclusive is really important in this world. It's what we do best. The power of the magazine pulls in the big guns. Just look at what appeared in various global editions of Grazia over the past few weeks. Ava Herzegova talking openly to Grazia at Italy about her life and career. German supermodel. Julius Stegner in an eight-page exclusive fashion shoot for Grazia, Germany. Chanel Muse model and it girl Alice Dallal in a shoot and interview with Italian Grazia. Letitia Castor, the troubled French actress and model, opening up in a shoot and interview with Italian Grazia. 
and Monica Bellucci, the iconic Italian actress, muse of Dolce & Gabbana and wife of French superstar Vincent Cassel in a provocative interview with Grazia Italy. This is happening around the world. The Korean issue of Grazia, which was only launched this year, has already broken away from the pack by championing local Korean stars who are starting to make waves internationally. This is of interest to anyone, everyone, you know, now that Korea is having its moment in the sun. The Korean edition also scored interviews and shoots with two of the country's biggest stars, a major coup for such a new magazine. But it's not just fashion, it's news as well. The biggest news story to break in UK in recent years, the Royal Wedding, was covered in outstanding detail by UK Grazia. It ran a special edition with up-to-the-minute stories in print, online on Grazia Daily, and through its army of tweeters and Instagrammers. From the award-winning post-punk cover, to placing um, style director Paula Reid in the live commentating box at the BBC, to smuggling Polly Vernon into the celebrations and style hunting the best street parties, Grazia left no new stone unturned. Um, exclusivity is also about breaking new ground. French Grazia used its outstanding fresh fashion credentials to shoot and interview supermodel and it girl Tati Collier. The edition shot four different collector's covers and turned the magazine into an interactive experience with QR codes embedded into key pages with links to behind the scenes video footage. Keeping our magazine strong with exclusive gold standard content, content is fundamental to our success. But we also must find other sources of revenue, a big theme of this conference. So like many others, we've been branching into um, e-commerce, levering, leveraging the brand with all its fashion credentials to drive an e-commerce model. Last season, French Grazia created a fashion app, app to shop the key accessories from the new season's collections. Readers could browse backstage videos, fashion editorials, and shop Grazia's edit of the season's hot, hottest accessories, clicking and buying through affiliate shopping links to e-boutiques. And the South African edition has just launched its online shopping portal, Spree, which you can link to from its magazine shopping pages. And as you heard from Paul Keenan earlier, UK Grazia's interactive monthly iPad edition with shoppable content has been greeted so favourably by the industry, it won the highest accolade for digital content at the PPA Awards last week. But I agree with, with Duncan with, uh, on the a whole theme of e-commerce. These are all just baby steps we're taking at the moment. We know editorial endorsement is incredibly powerful. It's why you see so much content on Net-A-Porter and other shopping websites. Um, but find, for us, finding the right e-commerce model will be a key to our success. We all know affiliates offer very little in percentage terms and are pain to police. So what other ground can we break with retail partnerships to offer us a bigger margin? I know there's a lot of doom and gloom about the industry at the moment, but I feel we're getting closer to the reinvention of our powerful brands through, by harnessing globalization, e-commerce, and building our social communities. Um, on that note, I'll leave you with an example of editorial and commercial in innovation, which is st starting to break this new ground. It was an initiative by Grazia.it, and paid for by Tommy Hilfiger. The American jeans giant wanted some innovative content to showcase its summer collection. And the Grazia team came up with a four-part surfing soap opera called Surf Shack. What I particularly love about this is its startup mentality. It's a very different way of doing things to what we've all been used to with our big magazines, teams, and editorial spend. It was shot in one day on a tight budget at the Italian seaside resort of Forte di Mami, masquerading as Ma Malibu, and it used Italian it girls and bloggers as models, 
and was written, directed and produced by the Grazia team. It is a leaner, more nimble model, but still retains the Grazia DNA. It is taking what we do best, content creation, and spinning it out into other revenue streams. Um, Hill Figure came to a magazine company because he knows that Grazia is an expert content creator. But again, we have to ask ourselves, does this content always have to be print? Hilfig was delighted with the results and other fashion brands are now queuing up to do the same. So anyway, I'll leave, on that note, I'll leave you with the video. So off we go to Malibu on the Med. <laughs> 